Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller. I invite you to join me as I interview artists from a variety of disciplines. We'll share powerful stories and lessons learned while making their art. So uh, good morning. This is Chris Miller with the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Um, As you know, I I love to interview artists that incorporate spiritual practice in their work. Uh, They use it when they create. They use it in their writing. They use it in their painting. And I am here today with Robin Hackett. She is a good friend of mine. She is a singer and songwriter. Uh, I love her to death. Uh, Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Chris. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be able to have this conversation with you. Well, I I am thrilled to have you as well. I I was going to tell you, um, last night I I went through and started listening to your music uh, on Spotify, and I was laying in bed like I used to do when I was 15, and just hearing song after song after song, and um, they're just, each one is is a gem. Um, Oh, thank you. And, and I just, you know how you, you just don't want to turn it off. You're just like, I have to listen for that next song. I have to listen to that next song. <laughs> I uh, wish everyone were like that when they listen to my music. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. It's just about getting that out there. Um, so you had mentioned a, a new uh, song. Is it a re-release or? Um, which one? The uh, Love is what we're here for. Uh, it's not a re-release, but it seems to be an appropriate song for a lot of different um, things that happen in life. So I've put it out on Valentine's Day, um, which people love that. But I've also put it out on, you know, the anniversary of 9-11. Um, uh, you know, just various times I put it out where I think that it's appropriate. Um, so I just will flip it up. I have a video actually that I did at Mile High Church. Um, and I don't know, it has, I don't know, probably like 15,000 hits on it or something like that. Oh, it's um, a, it's a wonderful song, especially with this, with COVID-19 and, yes. and everything we're feeling right now. Um, I wanted to point out a couple lines that really struck me and, um, I, I it's, I, I'm tired of all the anger and my own unkind behavior. Who am I to judge anyone at all? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I hear that, it just makes me pause. Uh, yeah, and it, you know, just you saying that, it, it's interesting to have someone um, read my lyrics back to me because that's just really touched something in me. Um, yeah, because I can't just only point the finger out to other people um, because I don't have, all the time, I don't have the best behavior as well. Um, so, and we're, we're truly all in this together. We all experience pretty much the same emotions, um, maybe the same things in life, just with different circumstances. So I think that was the whole point um, of that line. You know, who am I to judge you? I, I can't judge you. I have the same stuff going on, just with a different situations. Um, uh, which is so, so refreshing, which, you know, most people don't admit to that kind of weakness in themselves, you know? Well, if we don't, I mean, it really, you know, we've heard it's cliche. It really begins with us. It, it truly does. I mean, to, to the, the idea of love or the idea of compassion, you have to, um, you have to have that within yourself first. Um, you have to be compassionate towards yourself first. You have to love yourself first in order, this is my opinion, in order to authentically love other people or have compassion for other people. I think if you, if you put that out there, it appears to be love, it appears to be compassion, but may not necessarily be that because you don't, you don't even know what that is for yourself. Um, so that's just my thought on it. Oh, it's interesting because I think it, <clears throat> it honestly goes both ways. I mean, you, um, you have to accept that in yourself and accept it in others. And um, there's a certain part where you accept it in yourself. You kind of surrender to it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what I work with, with, with this podcast is, is how this is incorporated into your process of creating art. Cause you're obviously a song writer, a beautiful lyric writer as well. Um, yeah. This theme of oneness that you were talking about and love how do, do, is that something that comes into play when you write your music? 
You know, that's interesting. I, I, I'd have to think about that. Um, I think in terms of the oneness idea, I, I do believe, you know, with creativity, there is a, there's an energy out there, a one energy, and one can call it their muse, you can call it God, you can call it the universe, what have you. Um, but I do believe that my creativity comes from that one, from that one energy. Um, and when I sit down to write a song, sometimes I can finish a song in 15 minutes because m my whole being, my vessel is open to receive from that one, from that energy, whatever that is, the undescribable. Um, and there are other times when I, uh, I, I try and manufacture a song and it feels horrible to try and create from a place of manufacturing a song. Um, so I guess that, that oneness to me is that we can all tap in to that creativity, to that one energy, which to me is God, the universe, the divine, the muse. Um, so yeah, so in that sense, there, there is that oneness, if that, that makes sense to you. Well, it's interesting because I noticed that myself when I paint, um, if I'm the, the tighter that I'm tapped in, almost the quicker the creativity occurs. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you're right. There's times I sit there and I try to force it or I try to think, well, this worked before or this, this, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. This worked before. How come it's not working now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you try to use a certain gimmick or, well, this color palette should work. How come it's not working in this arena? And, <laughs> And, and I think it's true. I, I do that as a practice before I paint, I kind of do a little meditation and I sit down and I, I ground myself. Um, I, I was, when I was listening to your songs last night and, and I listen to them often, um, it's almost like a list of affirmations. Each song is so, um, one of you are perfect in your own way. Thankful. I am. Uh, the, the lines are just so, um, uplifting ah well that's you know that's once again it's um i'm the vessel and whatever that muse needs to um put like with love is what we're here for i hadn't written written a song in quite a while um nor did i show up to write a song i didn't pick up my guitar um uh, and one day i decided okay this has to stop if you want to create you have to show up at least so I showed up and I just said, okay, universe, spirit, God, what message needs to go out into the world? And that song came through really, really fast. Oh, wow. Love is what we're here for. And so it's almost like you're setting an intention, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. It's like setting an intention and I don't, I don't know what's going to come through. I mean, I had never, I don't think I'd even said that phrase before, love is what we're here for. But that particular night when I showed up to write and asked the universe, well, what message should I send out into the world? That's what came through. Wow. And so, you know, I, I, I wrestled with that. Do, do you have to set an intention before you start creating or do you just sit and receive? Um, I think there's a little bit of both. Maybe. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of both and it can go, you know, it can go either way. So for me with thankful I am, I was on the phone with a friend of mine and we were actually kind of um, complaining, you know, uh, about our lives and, oh, this doesn't work and da 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 And I, I happened to be out <laughs> in my backyard um, and we really, it was a complaining conversation just to get things off our chest. But then when I got off the phone, I literally looked around and saw how beautiful um, you know, my backyard was, uh, there were, were rosemary bushes. It was a really sunny day. It was a very, very blue sky. The wind was blowing gently. And then the next thing I know, here comes this song, Thankful I Am. Um, and so I know that I did not plan. I didn't even plan to write that day. It just happened to come out of circumstance. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, one, uh, that is one of my favorite songs of oh, yours. Um, and, and I, I even wrote down, uh, the dance is my spirit. The song is my life. Um, it, it, there's, there's a real wonderful truth in, in your wording. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I feel like, and I'm sure that you feel this way too, and people should know that are listening that Chris is an amazing artist as well. If you haven't seen his stuff, go go see his stuff on his. What what's your website? <laughs> <laughs> You're wicked. <laughs> CJ Miller Art. CJ yeah. Miller Art. Thank yeah. you for the plug. <laughs> you're, you're welcome because it is beautiful. Um, what were we? What did you ask me before? Well, we you see, that you had talked about the thankfulness and and and, and gratefulness. I think um, for me, when I tap into that energy, what, whatever we call it, whatever we choose to call it in whatever religious dogma or spirituality we have, um, it's through it, through, by being grateful, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Well, being grateful, uh, as you probably well know, puts you, uh, huh, it puts you, for me, it puts me in a receptive mode and um, it clears out anything, at least at that, that moment, it clears out anything that's negative that could go against that could cause me to go oh i'm not going to try and write because it's not going to be good enough you know or i'm not going to have the right melody come through or blah 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 no just be in gratitude in your life in general and walk in the in that place of gratitude and gratitude to me just puts you in a receptive mode and it puts you of course in the present moment as well too that, that, that's interesting um, that you say that because it's something that I uh, hope to put in my book is when when you're in a place of unappreciation or as you said, standing around with your friends and bickering or complaining okay. about things. <laughs> uh, yeah, we all do it. Uh, I, I stand in front of I'll stand in front of the easel and I just go blank. And uh, for me, the practice, like you just said, is to just sit there and almost do a list of thankful gratitudes um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I say when uh, a, a week ago when we first talked about doing this podcast, I I went out into the yard to weed because the the COVID nineteen you know we're trapped in the house it stresses you out, yeah. and I just played your music and it was just all these lines of gratefulness and and appre- self appreciation appreciation for our our place in the universe it just really put me in a great state. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's so funny. It's interesting, Chris, to hear you say that because um, I, I sometimes need to go back and read my own lyrics. I mean, you're making me aware of. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, there are some actors that I've heard of, like um, I think it's Robert De Niro and uh, Johnny Depp. They never, they finish a movie, they don't go back and watch it. And usually it's so funny that, and, and maybe this is a good comparison, but sometimes I'm not really aware of what I've written. Um, and it's good for me, it, probably in my life, to go back and read my own lyrics and go, oh, wow, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool, what was just written there. Um, and even though I do sing them, yes, I'm aware at that moment, but there are times when I get off my own path, it'd be great to go back and 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 read them as affirmations and go, oh, that's interesting. Because to actually look at them, the written word on the page, I don't do that that often. I sing them, but to actually read them uh, might be a very cool experience. Thank you. Uh, I I will give you a shameless plug and say, uh, I recommend that to any of our listeners to look up Robin Hackett on uh, Spotify and just do her whole play, listen to all the songs she's ever written. it, it is such an uplifting experience and um, there is definitely a presence in, in your music, but it, it's a, it's a great practice. So if you're standing in front of your, whatever your work table, your creative project, and you're at a standstill, go listen to Robin Hackett. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you know, you, we talk about getting connected and just almost being the vessel and just receiving mm-hmm. those words came from somewhere beyond, greater than us, you know, in our, in our physical limitations. And, uh, isn't that true? I mean, that's why, um, you know, that's why sometimes it's hard to take credit. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, many times I'll write a song and I'll go, Whoa, that's really good. What just came through, but I haven't learned that lesson yet. I have to catch up to the meaning of some of my songs spiritually myself, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So love is what we're here for. Well, that's a constant practice and a constant mantra for me. 
love is what we're here for. How loving can I be in every situation that I'm in? Right. And I, 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 I love the line. I am an instrument of my peace. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not looking outside for your peace. Right. It's not saying someone has to come and give this to me. Yeah. You are the instrument of your peace. Yes, absolutely. And you know, it's so funny because I went back and forth with that line because the real thing is I, I am an instrument of thy peace. Um, and I was like, well, should I do thy or should I do my? But no one's ever heard my. What are you going to do my for? Uh, but it's- <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. But then it made sense to me that it should be my. It should be my. I am an instrument of my peace. And you're taking ownership of it. Wow. Ownership of it. Well, I think that was a wonderful choice. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> it, 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 it makes the whole difference. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Be- because when we recognize that we are in control of that experience mm-hmm. for ourselves, we are the vessel, we are the opportunity, and, and we, have to, we have to welcome it in. Right. As right. opposed to just being something happening to us, we let it happen or make, you know, make it happen. That's right. Absolutely. And the other thing I thought of that comes up for me now, Chris, with the whole COVID thing is that You know, it it sounds corny. It's from High School Musical. We're all in this together. We are absolutely all in this together. Um, And it's a a level playing field right now because people are all across the globe experiencing the same fears right now, um, experiencing the the COVID virus and what's going to happen next. It's all uncertain for everyone. So that line about, you know, I'm tired of all this anger and my own unkind behavior. Uh, It's a weird juxtaposition, but if, if we're, it makes me just believe more and more that we're all one. We're all one. And this COVID virus is just starting to show people we're all one. We're all experiencing this, the same thing, the same fear, the same uncertainty. Um, So, I always find, and, and there's a sadness in this, I, I was in New York when the towers came down. And for the first couple of weeks after that, people were so lovely and so kind and so beautiful. And then, you know, because we all had experienced that one thing, but then as time went on, people went back to, you know, their, their old ways and forgot about that we all experienced that thing. Um, but right now with the COVID, it's gone on for such a long period of time. Um, I find people are being very, very loving and very kind, not in every situation, but on the whole, people in my neighborhood are walking by if I'm on the porch and everyone's making a point to say, hello, good morning, how are you? Um, and I, it's a reminder that that's, that's how we should be all the time. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great to really, really see our connective, our connectedness? So. Well, I, I agree with you. Um, we, we are one planet. And um, I think this reminds us that you can't build walls or isolate. We are connected. And, and stuff, stuff like this, a virus, things connect us. And even though it's, it's a negative thing, it shows us that, that we are connected and what we do affects people on the other side of the planet and vice yeah. versa. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, knowing that love is what we're here for, you know, maintaining that, that is key. That is um, how we set our intention mm-hmm. and, and you, through gratitude and love. And that's how we put ourselves in that place of connection with, with everything around right. us. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes across. You know, I have to mention this um, to our listeners. <clears throat> I had uh, Robin actually play music at my wedding. And remember? <laughs> yes, I do, because that picture just came up. When was your anniversary? Because it has to have been recently. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Yes, it was about three years and a month ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because a picture of me came came up playing at the wedding so well one of the the song that i had you sing which is one of my ultimate favorites as well so i I encourage listeners to to tap in on it's called where the light is Mm -hmm. and it's such a for me it was such a statement uh for for my marriage for um 
with a same sex partner to actually step out and claim it's the song is about for me, it just sounds like stepping out and claiming the light, claiming the light. Yeah, for yourself. Absolutely. And you know, what was interesting about that, uh, Chris is that, um, that's a song that I was afraid to play in, in new thought environments. And I know that this show isn't about new thought or whatever, but um, because many times I feel like people don't want to hear, like that song came out of a, a deep grief, out of a depression somewhat, of boxing myself in and not, not fully expressing myself, fully coming out. Um, and so uh, I want to go where the light is. I want to live where the light is. I don't want to live in this box um, that, you know, kind of, um, that kind of developed from things that happened in, in my childhood. I want to break out of that box and be where the light is, be where my full creativity is, be where my full love is, be where everything is. Um, so... That that song uh, did come from a, a very deep uh, grieving space. Well, it's interesting because uh, grieving is a universal feeling, mm -hmm. and and it, when you talk about oneness, um, it's relatable to everybody. We I think we all feel to some extent that we've put ourselves in a box. You know, <clears throat> yeah. It, remi it reminds me of that song. You know, this little light of mine, <laughs> 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 and and. Uh, and so I think we all do that. We feel this, this depression that we've boxed ourselves in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and perhaps this lesson with the COVID-19 is, is to, to show us that, that boxes, we can't really box ourselves in. We think we are. Mm -mm. I mean, this we, is showing us that we're all just one human race. I mean, this whole thing of, of color, of, you know, gender, of, you know, any of that. It's just, it's just, I mean, I, I don't know what to, to say, but um, we're right now, we're all just human. We're right. just human beings. That's all. It, it's, it, it is interesting. It is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter if you're a high, high up politician, a rich and famous rock star or someone living in the street. It's, we're all susceptible to it. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it, and it creates a commonality, you know, um, and hopefully you're right. Hopefully it, it, we won't just let that fade away. Yeah. I mean, that's going to, that's going to be the interesting thing. Um, and like I said, you know, with nine, you know, the world trade centers coming down, it was an interesting experience. It was beautiful. But then, you know, two weeks later, you know, taxis were honking horns that, you know, pedestrians <laughs> and yelling out the window and, you know, um, so I hope it's a great lesson, um, for all of us, I really do. Well, I, 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 I think uh, one other song I have to point out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> really, honestly, I, oh, that's what, the interesting thing about your music is I can't really pinpoint it into a, a genre. Uh, some of it sounds soulful. Some of it sounds folk, folkish. Some of it sounds country. Yeah. How would you how would you describe your piece? I don't. <laughs> I'm <laughs> done trying to describe it. I mean, you know, you know, as a as a young person when I first started um doing music, it was my dream to be a big, you know, star and da 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 da. da. But um I because I grew up in a household where my dad, you know, loved music and he played all all styles, all genres, you know, from Miles Davis to the fifth dimension to Woodstock to Jimi Hendrix to, you know, just everything, wow. just everything. So therefore I'm a product of that household. Um, and I didn't know that the music business didn't want to hear everything. They wanted you to be in one, one genre and say what you are. Um, and so, you know, that has been, I, I don't define it. I love all kinds of music. Um, I'm eclectic. And, um, you know, that's, that's just what it is. That's well, speaking of putting, putting things in boxes, right? We, yeah. we so want to put someone in a category and, and, and yet every, every genre that you do, every, every song is wonderful. And um, I think I hear that in each one, that conscious connection, that, that truth telling. And, and, and it can have a little country hit, hit to it or soulful. Um, <laughs> What was the most, you re released a song very recently uh, in 2020. 
I did. I released a song called More, which, you know, I don't know what genre that is, that, that's in. I'm done trying to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just good music. It's just good music. Um, and so I actually asked, uh, I was playing, where was I playing? I can't remember the place. And I, I um, there was this new person that I met and I was just curious what his reaction was to my music. It was his first time hearing it. And I said, what, you know, what genre do you think that is? Where do you think I fit in? He goes, that genre is just good, you know, expletive music. <laughs> That's what that genre is. <clears throat> That's interesting. I told you that I was in the car and that came up on my son's playlist. Ah, so, ah, my son. Wild. Isn't that's it wild? Fun. It's a great song. It's Thank a great you. song. Thank um, you. So wonderful uh, uh, talking with you and going over this and, and hearing about you. Oh, that last song I have to mention is um, Quiet Marie. Oh, yeah. And, there, and so some of these actually have a storyline behind them. Uh, is well, this that really, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't have some great storyline, except for a friend of mine and I decided we were going to, you know, write a song. Uh, that's it. We decided we're going to write a song. That is what came out. That song is really about, um, I mean, you can take it across the board. It's about, um, you know, uh, I'll say it straight away. It's about domestic abuse and sexual abuse. Okay. Um, but more important than that, it's about um, claiming your power and speaking up and out about, you know, something that's been done to you inappropriately. Wow. Um, that, you know. Well, it's the kind of, you hear it and then you start listening again and, and you're like, what, what, what? And, and you, and it's, it's not obvious. It's not, it's not an obvious. And then you hear it right. in the lyrics and yeah. um, it is what kept me up last night. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I had to hear it again and, and then hear it again, you know, um, which is what you want. You want people to yeah. just have to hear the song over and over and over again. And, it, and it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And yet there's that message behind it. Yeah. And it's a, it's rather haunting and, you know, it's the, with the whole me too movement and that song is very old, um, uh -huh. but it still lives across, you know, decades, which is what I love about what, you know, the music that I've written. Um, but with the whole Me Too movement, I forgot where I was going with that. Well, it's relevant today. I mean, the, yeah. the irony is, even though that's what these messages are, your, your songs are so universal. And, and when you talk about oneness and, and this, they're, they're, they're eternal messages. Eternal. Yeah, so with that in mind, you know, I uh, had talked to my mom about something that had happened to me when I was young. Um, and I, I played it off as something that was really not a big deal. And, you know, there are other women in the Me Too movement that have had horrible things happen to me, uh, happen to them. And I had this one little incident and, uh, and I realized I never spoke on it till my 40s with my mom. And, um, and her response to me was, and she's from a different generation, she said, well, most every woman has had something like that happen to them. Yeah. And I was like, wow, wow. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Uh, it is. It is kind of sad. Um, but there, once again, there's that oneness thing, you know, we're, <laughs> we're one on so many different levels. We're all connected. Yeah, well, I, I definitely, to the listeners, I recommend listening to that song as well. But like I said, I would just go through the whole list. <laughs> yeah. hey. So I mean, anyway, my list up somewhere. Yes. Yes. It's, it's wonderful on Spotify they they have a whole collection of songs. You could just one after the other, including yeah. the more recent release, you know, wonderful. So. Yeah. Robin Hackett music.com. Okay. Robin Hackett music.com. That is great. Well, I appreciate chatting with you. It's always fun. And, yes. um, and there's so much here. It's, it's hard to get your hand around, but, um, wonderful. Well, you'll have to have me on again then. <laughs> I definitely will. I definitely will. Um, it's getting a lot of uh, response. So I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you again. And I will, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to remember the dance is my spirit. The song is my life. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I will go forth from there. So All right, thank Chris, you. Thank you so much for having me. And hopefully we can have lunch one day. Uh, hopefully we'll be physically close instead of socially distant. So. <laughs>
there's a song in that. <laughs> there, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Take care. And my own unkind behavior. Who am I to judge anyone at all? Cause if I look into him, I can see the pain you've been through. And I know.